Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Black Knights Weekly. I'm Nick DeSectis bringing you along for a closer look inside Army Athletics. Today we'll meet the new voice up at Mikey Stadium, talk to a freshman having quite the impact out on the pitch, and head over to Sprint Football for our Coach's Corner. If you've been to either of the football games so far this year at Mikey Stadium, you've heard a new voice coming out of the PA system. The new public address announcer for Army football is Gordon Deal. Deal very well versed in his trade. He's the subject of this week's Army one-on-one. -on -one. Row 8, seat 17. Let's give a round of applause for today's pen-fed lucky seat of the game. I got onto PA almost by default. You know, I was a college jock and the women's volleyball team at Rutgers where I went to school called and asked if I could help out and I did it that way and then that morphed into doing it for the Knicks on a part-time basis at Madison Square Garden and then when the timing of that didn't work anymore uh, out of nowhere the the Giants emailed me and uh, asked if I were available on some Sundays and of course then we got the, the great experience here at, uh, at Mikey Stadium. That is a first down Army. PA in a, in, a, in a geeky sort of explanation, it depends on what you do. If you do everything from, say, in football down in distance to promotions and timeouts announcements, it can be a lot of work. But in some stadiums, you might only just be the down in distance guy, or you might only just be the promotions and timeouts guy. So it kind of depends on the sport. But I guess, I guess football really is, is probably the most exciting. Great. Okay. Tackle by Bacon. Uh, it's, it's been remarkable. There's nothing like making that drive onto campus and just seeing how pristine everything is, how well kept the campus is, and uh, watching the, the cadets and various soldiers and officers move around campus, I, I think is, it's fascinating, it's, it's life-changing. It's, it's a remarkable experience. Hey Army fans, get on your feet for the m t-shirt cannon. I have a day job, right? I work in radio. I work for the Wall Street Journal. I do a syndicated uh, radio program called the Wall Street Journal this morning. Ready underway. Come support some of the Black Knight squads in their upcoming competitions on the fields of friendly strife. Upcoming events include... How much further is there to go? I do Army football and Giants football. I'm not sure there is anywhere else to go. Army first down. And then... The year after the Giants won the Super Bowl in 2011, the next, the next game to start the 2012 season was when that team was officially recognized because the fans had not had a chance to celebrate that at MetLife Stadium. So when the fans first got a chance to recognize the team the following season, that was a lot of thrills. Santiago, the carrier. That is a first down, Army. Hardest part of the job is being able to pay attention to what's happening on the field in combination with what's happening elsewhere in the stadium, whether it's a, some sort of video promotion or a contest or an announcement that needs to be made that's not game related. On the score. Touchdown Army. I'm Gordon Deal, public address announcer for Army Black Knights football. Gordon gets back to work at Mikey Stadium Saturday at noon as the football team takes on Wake Forest. The women's soccer team is 4-3 and three so far this season with three shutouts. Those shutouts have been credited to a plebe goaltender who won the job in the preseason, Jordan Kiselia. We chatted with Jordan in this week's Cadet Spotlight. Lay it off further to towards the right side, Stanton with it. Stanton, the drive! Punch save made by Kiselia. That may just save the contest. During Beast, it was hard. There was like a major culture change, and that was pretty hard for everyone. But um, I adjusted, and I, I think it's been fun. Like, it's been hard, the entire experience, but it's been really fun overall. I have a bunch of friends who are slugs and aren't core squatters, and I know they have a hard time just because they don't have an entire team backing them. But, like, I have that entire support system, so it helps a lot. Talk to a couple of them about just like being stressed and like just not knowing how to handle it all and they've given me pointers and 
a lot of them have helped me not only on the field but academically so they they're just really like all mentors for you and they all they all just care and so it, it just goes a long way high school soccer is slow I mean it's not slow but it's not division one soccer it's not club soccer or it's not college soccer excuse me so yeah it's everyone's good in college not everyone's good in high school I think the team is on the right path we obviously have a lot to improve on and every team does but I definitely see the potential in our team and I definitely think that we can go far this season I really just want to do my best for the team so wherever if just as long as I do my best I feel like and the team does their best, we can go far. So as a whole, like I wanna obviously make it to the championship of the Patriot League and win. Like that's that was always what we had been talking about. So as a team goal that's what it is, but as a individual goal I guess, just shutouts, you know. My name is Jordan Casalia, I'm a freshman goalkeeper on the women's soccer team. The women's soccer team opens up Patriot League play on Saturday with a showdown at Bucknell. Heading over to our coach's corner this week, we talk to Lieutenant Colonel Mark West, head coach of the Army Sprint football team. Coach West draws up a play for us that is becoming so popular on every level of football from high school through college all the way up to the NFL level. It's the read option in this week's coach's corner. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Mark West, head coach of the Army Sprint football team and today I'm going to take you through uh, what's become a very popular play uh, in college football as well as the NFL now and that's the zone read. Uh, the zone read is one of our better running plays that we use on the team and one of the reasons we like it so much uh, is because it allows us to run the football effectively even against teams who decide to put what we call six in the box. So as you can see from my diagram, we've got six defenders uh, inside the tackle box, uh, which would encourage most teams to throw the football because there's only five defenders on the perimeter. Uh, however, with six defenders in the box using the zone read, uh, we believe we can still run the ball effectively. Uh, and the reason why we can is, I'm going to use this play as a, as a diagram, let's say we're running zone right. Uh, when we run zone right, that means all of our linemen are taking zone steps, hard steps to their right, uh, and they're going to block, you know, they're responsible for blocking uh, certain people on the, on the defense. So in this case, our uh, right tackle blocks the end, our right guard will block a uh, man over up to the next level, which would be the linebacker. Uh, our center attempts to take over uh, this guard here or move up and help on the linebacker depending on the way he slants. Uh, our left guard uh, will uh, block uh, here, uh, the, the tackle on his side, uh, up to the uh, backer. Uh, and then our left tackle is making his own step to take over that, uh, that position there or to continue up to the next level. So as you can see, uh, we basically have five uh, of our offensive linemen blocking five of their defenders. So the question you ask is, well, what about this end over here on the, on the back side? Who the heck's blocking him? Well, we use our quarterback's eyes uh, to block the backside end. So our F is he takes his steps to get the, uh, to get the uh, handoff from the quarterback. Our quarterback is eyeing that defensive end to see what he does. If the defensive end, in most cases, uh, tries to contain the outside, that means he's going to come up field. He's not going to try to let anything get outside of him, so it's an easy read for the quarterback. He just gives the ball uh, to, the, to the running back, and then the running back looks for a hole in the A-gap uh, or the backside A-gap or what we call the backside B, depending on the flow of the defense. Uh, however, there are times when we've run the zone enough at the de defense where this end decides, you know what I'm going to do this time? I'm going to crash down the line of scrimmage, and I'm going to tackle that F as he's trying to gain some yardage. Well, if the quarterback's doing his job and reading that end, when he does that, all he does now is disconnect the ball from the belly of the running back and he takes off running with the ball around in. And as long as we've got good blocks and the defense is already flowing this way because they're reading the zone to the right, that makes it a nice gain for our quarterback. Uh, and many times it ends up being big yardage uh, because that defensive end has been uh, sucked down, if you will, trying to tackle the running back. So zone read, uh, it's, it's a great run concept uh, because you can still block six in the box even though you're blocking one of them with the quarterback's eyes, uh, but it allows you to run the ball effectively uh, even against a defense who's trying to force you uh, to pass the ball. So hopefully uh, you learned a little bit about zone read today. Uh, thank you for supporting Army Sprint Football.
time. First and 10, Army, they hand it off to Burrell again. Has a lane off left tackle. Burrell down to the five, to the pylon, he's in. Touchdown, Army. The Sprint football team takes on post on Friday night at Shea Stadium, a game I'll have for you on night vision. Lastly today, we hand the microphone off to the volleyball team for 15 seconds with Army Athletics. Hi, I'm Nicole Perry. And I'm Margot Jarka. And this weekend, we have two very important conference matches in the Patriot League. We play Lehigh tomorrow at 7 o'clock down here at Gills Fieldhouse. And on Saturday, we play at 7.30 against Bucknell. Come down and support us. Go Army Volleyball! Beat everyone! The volleyball team with two games this weekend. For the complete schedule and information on all your Black Knight teams, visit GoArmySports.com. Tickets are still available for Saturday's football game against Wake Forest at Mikey Stadium. Kickoff is at noon. To purchase tickets, call 1-877-TIX-ARMY or visit ArmyGameDay.com. Thanks so much for joining us on this week's edition of Black Knights Weekly. Until next time, for Night Vision, I'm Nick DeSanctis. Go Army!